Welcome to the France 24 Observers. This show is based on our network of observers. They're ordinary people who tell us what's going on where they are and send in photos and videos to document it. We check it here in Paris and bring the best to you. Our first report today comes from an observer who's traveling in India. He was at a demonstration where people were furious about something everyone can understand, the rising cost of living. We head to New Delhi with Frenchman Richard Benamia. I went to a demonstration today that was organized by one of India's leftist parties. For those who know Delhi, it was near the Red Fort in Old Delhi. The speeches are pretty incendiary. People are furious at the Indian government, especially the latest move to hike petrol prices. It will raise the cost of living. It's all part of the effort to transform India using free market capitalism to do it. What ends up happening is that a large part of the population get left behind. Things just get even tougher for them. The demonstration got pretty tense when people showed up with a yellow banner and with effigies of members of the Indian government. There were also effigies for the World Bank and the IMF. They were burned and destroyed. It's clear that the Indian government's worried about what's happening, worried that riots could break out. Now we have something you may not know about Afghanistan. They're mad about cricket. The sport was first pushed by the Taliban, who thought it could soften their image. And now the Afghans are rising fast on the international scene. A lot of people think it could really help in uniting the country. We go to Kabul with Tawab Zafarzai, coach for the national under-16 team. Cricket was brought in by Afghans who'd been living in Pakistan as refugees. The Taliban had tried to promote cricket, but it really took off when the national team joined the International Cricket Council in 2003. Now Afghanistan's in the top 20 teams in the world. We've even played against India, which has been playing internationally for nearly a century. Young people in Afghanistan are crazy about cricket. 80% of the population follows the national team. We have a national tournament with teams from all 23 provinces. All the Afghan tribes play cricket. They used to say cricket was just for the Pashtuns, but that's not the case anymore. The national team has people from all parts of Afghanistan. Cricket helps unite the people of Afghanistan. Here's what we shout when we win. Finally today, the Democratic Republic of Congo. The country just celebrated 50 years of independence. Before that, it was ruled brutally by Belgium as a rubber-producing colony. We asked our observer what it's like to be a Belgian living in Congo today. He lives in the capital, Kinshasa, and his name is Danny Masson. On the morning of the celebrations, I came across the vehicles that were getting ready for the parade. I started shooting pictures. On the parade route, there were people everywhere. It was impossible to get to the stands. People came a long way on foot just to be there. For me personally, the June the 30th Independence Day events felt like a true celebration. The old image of white people in Congo is starting to change. People used to think that Belgians, French, other white people are in Congo just to make a quick buck. Now, some people are beginning to see us differently. That's it for this week. As always, you can find more reports from our observers on our website. See you next time.